There is nothing that rivals the awe, the immensity, the scale of what God's love has to offer and is for us and in us. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Thinking era 26, fear of fear. Okay, let's go to 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Whenever we feel this emotion or this feeling that we call fear, we need to understand that that didn't come from God. That came from the enemy, that came from deception, that came from something that's not godly. And we shouldn't feed anything that's not godly. We shouldn't feed anything that we are not willing to put our trust in. So by feeding fear, it means that you are putting a certain amount of your trust in this fear, in things going wrong. Keep on contemplating how things will go wrong, how you won't succeed, how things will backfire and how everything will blow up. You know, a lot of things that will happen are not in your control. A lot of things that can happen not on not in your control and we need to understand that we need to understand that we can only do certain things we can only act according to our own ability and fearing something that you don't have ability to act over won't benefit you that will just make you anxious. It will just cause you to panic, to stress over something that you cannot control. But then it says, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So when we feel this emotion or this feeling called fear, we need to replace it with power and love and a sound mind. And you would say, it's not that easy. You don't understand. And you are right. It's not that easy. But it's very possible. We've been stuck in addiction for so long and it seems to us that something's not in our control. We immediately fear that situation to fail and to backfire or to blow up. We fear that because our past showed us that things backfire and it blow up. The funny thing is, in our addiction, we were the person causing the backfire and the blow up. Now in a, in a sober state of mind, we fear things that we don't have control over. We fear circumstances at home we fear the state of the country and the world and the corona pandemic something that a lot of people fear how will that fear benefit anyone you know it's okay to be concerned to be concerned about your health to be concerned about your actions, um, your exposure to the virus in these days, you know, to be concerned and to protect yourself and to protect the people around you and to be safe. We can all have those concerns, but fearing that everyone will get the virus and this is the end of the world and everyone will die, that fear won't benefit anyone. Let's look at why a person would be afraid of failing, be afraid of things not working out, not going the way we've planned it to go. I've got a list of things here why 
a person would think this. But the most important reason for me is because we, we were the ones messing it up. We were the ones quitting. You know? And now, because we were used to quitting, messing things up, we fear that other people in our lives will mess it up and will quit on us. Failing makes you worry about the ability you have to pursue your future, to do the things you want to do. The fear of failing will ruin your expectations of making a success further on in life. You fear that people will give up on you. You fear that people might quit on you because we've struggled with perseverance in life. We struggled with following through in life. We fear that while we are here, other people will struggle with those things. But they've managed quite all right. They are managing their lives and we are in rear. So we fear that the people that are helping us will stop helping us. We fear that the people that are loving us will stop loving us. We fear that the people that we love won't be there forever. You know? And all of those things are worries and fears. Two things about them. They are not in your control and they are not from God. Now you want to sow into something that's not from God, a feeling, a, an emotion that's not from God and something that's not true and not in your control. So we need to think about what we fear. You know, there's reality based fears and that is something different. If you, if you lack security in your life, you might fear a robbery. If you walk alone at night, you might fear being hurt, you know? And that is a reality-based fear, you know? You can have all the confidence in the world that Nothing wrong will happen if you walk, let's say, in a lion's den. But there's reality in that situation. There's reality in things might go wrong. But fearing about them and being worried about them won't prevent them from going wrong. Worrying about things blowing up in your life won't prevent the blow up. Actions can prevent the blow up. Doing something about your situation. Working on the things you are able to work on, which is yourself, might prevent the blow up. But worrying about it will just cause anxiety and panic. I understand that sometimes we are in a situation and we are so worried and we are so concerned and we have this fear of things going wrong and not working out because we are not there, we are not in control. But that fear won't prevent the blow up. That fear is also not a confirmation that there will be a blow up. That fear is a picture that you paint in your own head. That fear is your way of perceiving things. That fear causes you to put yourself in the middle of your picture. That fear will cause you to act in selfishness. I'll read it again. And we need to understand the, the reality of the scripture. Okay, so it says... For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear is not from God. God wants things to work out for your benefit 
and he wants to bring you closer to him. And sometimes he uses frightful situations, situations where you have concerning, situations where you fear the outcome. He uses those situations to bring you closer to him through power and love and a sound mind. 